May I preach to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Grandparents are very observant people. Because while parents may be busy, while parents may be trying to handle certain things, grandparents are vigilant about the grandchildren and what's happening with them to the point where, at least in my case, my father will consistently remind me about something that I said, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I did not know that I needed glasses as a kid until my grandmother pointed out to my parents, you know that Alex's face is about that far from the television, right? You may want to get his eyes checked. And the thing about getting your first set of eyeglasses is that until you put them on, you really may not realize just how bad your vision was. And so in the second grade, when I got my first set of, of glasses, I put them on. And it was like putting on a pair of 3D glasses. Because I didn't just see things more clearly. It felt like I was looking at them with a third dimension, that things were just popping out at me. So not only could I see the board, but could actually see people better. There's a story about a young boy who, and I wish it was my story, but there's a story about a young boy who gets his first set of glasses, he turns to his mother and says, you're beautiful, you know. When we look at the world through healed eyes, when we look at the world through corrected eyes, we begin to notice things that were always there but we were not able to see them. And so as our parish this morning gathers to talk about mission and vision on this Mission Sunday, and it's so wonderful to see the two services combined, I can't think of a better story than the healing of blind Bartimaeus for us to use as kind of the basis of what we're talking about today. So in the story, what's interesting is that Jesus and his disciples are coming back from, from Jericho, and as they go along the side of the road, they encounter a blind man. Now, this was completely normal, because if you needed to beg from people, you went to where the people were traveling. It's the same today. And as the man couldn't see, he began to probably hear and feel those footsteps coming along the road. And he probably asked, who is coming? It seems like a big crowd. Someone probably said, it's Jesus. Bartimaeus has heard of Jesus. Now, he doesn't know exactly who he is, but he's heard enough to say, maybe this Jesus can heal me. I've heard that he's healed other people. Maybe this Jesus can heal me. And so because he can't see Jesus, he begins to call out in the same way that you and I might call out if we're lost in the woods. You just call out and say, Son of David, have mercy on me, Jesus. And of course, the crowd does what? They say, well, just get up. We need to bring you closer to Jesus because you're blind and poor and a beggar. We need to get you as close to the master as possible. No. That's not what they do. And the disciples, even hearing it and walking by, they don't do it. In fact, they tell Bartimaeus to be quiet. And I'm sure they didn't do it very politely. But Bartimaeus is persistent. He doesn't let anybody tell him that he cannot call out to Jesus. And so he does it again. And Jesus hears this and stops what you might call the convoy and has him come over. And here's one of the best parts about Jesus' healing stories, and it occurs in several of them. He asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Now, I used to always think this was a silly question. Asking a blind man, what do you want me to do for you? 
But Jesus knows the heart of people. And that even if we're sick, even if we're hurt, even if we're broken, we may not ask for healing. We may be tempted to ask for something else. But Bartimaeus knows. Heal my vision. So as we gathered this morning and we begin to talk about mission and vision, it's interesting how the church over the last 20 or so years has been treating this topic. And the most popular thing has been, like in the corporate world, for those of you who participated in this, is to hire somebody to come and tell the church what its mission is. Right? Because that's what you do as a company. You get an outside consultant and you get somebody who specializes in that and they get everybody together, they get a big whiteboard out and they start to say, okay, what's your mission? Well, the good news is, is that St. John's didn't spend any money on a consultant. It's kind of like when I was growing up doing math. The answer is in the back of the book. And so I'm not going to ask you to do it now, but I ask you at some point today to go to page 855 of the Book of Common Prayer and read the mission of the church. It's right there, and it's free. The mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and one another in Christ. To restore unity. That means that you and I, as Christians, have the mission of being reconcilers with the world. Reconcilers within the church and reconcilers outside of these walls. But before we go out and do that, there's something very important we need to bring. Our Jesus glasses. Yes, I can still see you, by the way. <laughs> we need to bring our Jesus glasses with us because if we're not looking through the eyes of Jesus Christ, then we're only seeing the world in two dimensions. If we're not looking through the eyes of Jesus Christ, then it is impossible to see what he wants us to see. Think for a moment that the people who traveled with Jesus didn't see what he was pointing out, didn't see the kingdom that he was trying to point out right to their face. And that's because so much of the things we need to see have become invisible. When we think of the poverty and violence in our world, when we think of all the things that need to be changed in our world, it just kind of turns into one big blur if we're not careful because there's just so much of it, our eyes get overwhelmed. You know, that can actually happen, that something you see can be so vivid, so powerful, that your brain says, shut off the eyes, this is too much. So we need to see through the eyes of Jesus. This last week, I was able to participate in a wonderful hurricane relief uh, outreach project right here in Waimama. There was a priest, Father Jose Rodriguez, who he is from Central Florida, and he calls me up right after Hurricane Helene and says, is there anything that we can do as your brothers and sisters in the Episcopal Church in Orlando who weren't really affected by the storm? What can we do to help you serve the people in your community? And for me, my head is still swimming about everything that was happening and about to happen with Milton. But he was very patient. He says, don't worry, we'll provide everything. We'll bring the food, we'll bring the volunteers, we'll bring everything that's needed so that people can be served. And that's what he did. We went down to the Lord's Lighthouse on Thursday. And now, keep in mind, I've seen the pictures from the Lord's Lighthouse. I've seen the display that we have in our parish from the Lord's Lighthouse. And I've even seen their Facebook page. But I wasn't seeing the world in 3D. Because when I came there and saw the people who had lined up at 6 o'clock in the morning for food, for their daily bread, I was humbled. Because I realized that I had not seen them. And so now the challenge is, can I keep these glasses that Christ has given me on so I can continue to see the people around me? And they're not just out there, they're right here. Can we see one another and see the challenges that each one of us is facing, the problems that we're facing, and see one another and say, 
I see you. I'm here for you. How can I help you? As we listen and pray about our mission here at St. John's, there's two things I want us to be mindful of. The first one is, we know what we're called to do. We know what we're called to do. It's in the book, right? And the good news is, is that we've been doing it, but the second thing is we need to continue to be vigilant because we can know what the mission is, but if we're not reminding ourselves from time to time as we do today, there's a, there's a temptation to just kind of let it fall by the wayside. So something I want to commit myself to do and that I urge us to commit ourselves to do is not just to look around us and see the world through Christ's eyes, but also keep our ears open for the Bartimaeuses among us. There are people calling out for help. And yes, we're giving a lot of help in our community. We're doing some wonderful things. The food that we give, the backpacks, all the different types of visitations that we do, St. John's is walking the walk. But today is a good reminder to just keep our ears tuned and our eyes open because the person that needs help might be me, might be you. And what did we learn from Bartimaeus if we take nothing else from his story is that when we call out for help, Jesus can do anything. When we call out for help, Jesus can do anything.